Uh, welcome back to Working with Watson. Uh, we are back here today to talk about, again, those electrons. So last quick video you had um, talked about the shells and how many numbers were in a shell and of electrons. That will be very important for what we're doing today. So looking at the periodic table, you can see here on the screen, um, this is what's important for right now, is you notice this little purplish pink uh, zigzaggy line that goes down. Um, that is a separator. So that separates um, the metals from the non-metals. So everything over here on the left, these items are, are considered to be metals, are metals. Uh, everything over here on the right side of that zigzaggy line above and to the right are um, non-metals. A lot of them are gases, not all, uh, but a lot of them are metals. So you can see, even if I'm clicking, uh, if I go here, um, if I'm on 43, up here at the top where it says group name, you'll see it says transition metal. Um, over here, alkaline earth metals or alkali metals. The only exception here is hydrogen. Hydrogen is its own thing. Um, it is not a metal, um, but it gets placed over, it's still placed over here because of our um, electron shells um, that goes there. So the periodic table, we'll get, we won't go into the in-depth, but it does give us an idea also of how many atoms are in, or how many shells there are, sorry, and how many electrons are in that last shell um, so that it would form. So periodic table from there. So this is the zigzaggy line that tells us, again, to the left, metals, to the right, non-metals, um, and that will be important here on the next slide. So here we have an oxygen molecule. Okay, um, and two hydrogen molecules. Okay, these atoms, uh, looking at them, so you can see hydrogen. Hydrogen has one atom, uh, going back to that periodic table. Um, it is a non-metal, again hydrogen. Um, oxygen is again to the right on that periodic table, so it again is a non-metal. So we have two non-metals here. The hydrogen atom has one electron. Remember that first shell can hold up to two. So this has an empty spot right over here. Hydra, that hydrogen atom, it wants to fill that spot. Remember, in, in a shell, they want to fill those spots completely up. There's a spot available. They don't like empty spots, but there's one available. Same thing with this hydrogen atom over here. There's an extra empty spot right over here. They want that to be filled. And they want it to be there. So what we're going to look at is how molecules form. So the first way a molecule will form um, is actually called a covalent bond. So a covalent bond happens when, between non-metals. Okay, again, oxygen, hydrogen are neither one a metal on the periodic table. So going back to this also, looking at oxygen, oxygen has two in the inner shell. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it has an atomic number of eight, so it has eight electrons around the outside, two in the first shell, six in the second shell. So you can see there's two spots available in this outer shell that are not filled. Again, they want to be filled. They're not always filled, but they want them to be, and this is how bonding forms. So the covalent bond forms because an oxygen atom is like, hey, I, I want two more electrons in that outer shell. I, I need to fill those. Hydrogen, again, it wants an extra atom also because it wants two in this shell, right? So they want to fill those shells. So the way a covalent bond works is that these hydrogen atoms are going to move down and they're going to bond with the, we'll put that right kind of in between the two, they're going to bond with that oxygen atom. And then this oxygen atom might share there. So now they're going to share these two atoms. Now, hydrogen in its outer shell will have two atoms because it's sharing one of oxygens and it's sharing its atom with oxygen. So right now, oxygen has seven in its outer shell because this one got filled. It's sharing this bond with hydrogen. So now it's like, hey, that's great and all, but I still have this one empty spot over here and it wants to be filled also. So it will bond with another hydrogen atom 
See if I got all of that there. And this one might form come down, and it's going to place itself right there. And then it's going to share, again, another electron with that one. So these two electrons are now part of this hydrogen atom, and it's a part of, and then they're also a part of the oxygen atom. They are sharing them. Okay, it's almost like they are both kind of holding hands, holding on to those electrons uh, and not letting them go. They're not fighting over them. They're sharing them. They don't want to let it go. Okay. So what ends up happening here is this when these bonds happen, they formed a molecule. Now, this molecule is H2O, two hydrogens, H2, so two hydrogens, O is only one of them, so H2O forming water. So this is how a water molecule uh, will form. They form covalent bonds between two nonmetals that are sharing those other things. So again, if I look, I have in this outer ring of oxygen, remember that second ring holds eight. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight in that outer shell now. Oxygen's happy, its outer ring is completely full, um, hydrogen's happy. Its outer ring is completely full. Um, oxygen in that second ring has eight. Hydrogen in its first ring has two. All of them are happy uh, because they're in at peace because they have reached that balance by reaching or uh, re filling their outer shells. Okay. Now there's a different type of bond here. So this is sodium and chlorine. Okay, sodium and chlorine. Uh, when they uh, work together, actually form table salt. So sodium chloride is table salt. Um, and this is the type of what uh, bond uh, is going to happen when we have nonmetals forming with metals. So sodium is a metal. Chlorine is a gas. It's a nonmetal. So on the sodium on the periodic table is way over there on that first row. Uh, chlorine is way over on the second or on the right or on the right side. Um, over uh, on the right of that, remember that zigzaggy line. So sodium, metal, chlorine, nonmetal. When these two will form, oh, where's my thing? They will form what is called an ionic bond. So this is different than the covalent bond. Covalent, co, meaning, you know, working together to uh, co ionic changes. So the way chlor this type of bond works, uh, by the way, I will mention that chlorine has um, a atomic number of 17, 1, 2 in the inner circle, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 in this circle. Again, the outer ring will want to have 8, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it has 17 total, 2 plus 8 plus 7 plus, is there 17. It's got an empty spot right here, and it really wants to fill that spot. Okay, it gets greedy, really wants to fill it. Um, sodium, uh, in which I believe last time I also told you on the last video that I thought um, the atomic number of 11 was potassium. I was wrong. It is sodium. Um, I couldn't remember that off the top of my head. Um, but sodium, again, one, two in the middle ring. Outer ring, one, two, three, four. Four, five, six, seven, and eight. That's it. Simba, you know, it's all peaceful. It's calm uh, if that ring. But then it adds this extra electron here, and that throws everything off. So this ring actually has seven empty spots in it. It's not. It's not happy. So what they will do is chlorine, and in, this works in an ionic bond. Chlorine is not happy. It's got an empty spot. Well, sodium just happens to have an extra one. So what sodium is going to do, it's going to reach over here and it's going to steal this electron from chlorine. So chlorine now has filled its empty spot, right? It has eight out electrons in its outer shell. Well, sodium loses an electron, so this outer ring is no longer important to it because its outer ring is now the second one and it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's got eight in its outer ring. It's perfectly happy. But what happened is that now chlorine, or sodium, sorry, has a 
nope, uh, positive charge. Chlorine now has a negative charge. And as we've learned with magnets and things, when we have opposite charges, well, they attract each other. So with sodium being positive because it has more protons than electrons, this molecule, that's going to take a while, is actually going to be attracted to the chlorine um, because it has a negative charge. So positive charge and negative charge are going to suck together um, and get stuck together. That is how an ionic bond forms. So one of them will reach out and grab um, some extra electrons from the other ones. Uh, when they do that, they throw off their balance, so positive and negative charges. Um, and then once those pos one is more positive, one is more negative, those will bond together. So this is how table salt would form in an ionic bond. Okay? So again, covalent bonds, sharing. Co, doing it together, like if we um, talk about cooperation with co at the beginning, things working together. Um, an ionic bond is uh, basically one of them is reaching out and stealing the other one. Uh, you might think of them, an ionic bond, as a sibling bond. One of them has something the other one wants. So what does it do? It goes over and steals it. But because they're, you know, family, your siblings or your family, you can't get rid of them, you're stuck with them. So they are still then stuck together because of those opposite charges attracting. Um, you know, I kind of think of that as how siblings work because that's how siblings worked in my house. Um, you know, hey, he's got something I want. I'm going to go take it. But yet we're still stuck together because we're siblings. Um, just like uh, these atoms, one will steal from the other. And yet they're still then stuck together uh, to form that bond. If you have any questions about this, uh, please let me know as we form some molecules. Peace.